Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the week of the Pisces full moon. And the theme for this week is going to be reality versus fantasy, right? Reality versus fantasy, because we're in Virgo season, and I think today or tomorrow or something, um, this week, Venus enters Virgo, so we have emphasis of the sun and Venus in Virgo, but then we have at the end of the week the full moon in Pisces, and Neptune is of course still in Pisces, which adds a lot of weight to anything going on in Pisces, and it's very interesting because I feel like this full moon is going to be just massive, like energetically like explosive, like I'm literally seeing in my mind the moon exploding, just like swollen and exploding, like something ready to just burst, right? And it's interesting, this morning I wake up, roll out of bed, uh, take my dog outside, and one of my neighbors walks past, and the first thing she said to me is, it's harvest season, it's harvest season, and I was like, yep, because <laughs> I was thinking about the upcoming full moon, because even though by the time I'm fil filming this on Sunday, it's still like five or six days away or something, um, it feels enormous. Like I've been feeling it coming already for like an entire week, like practically since the Virgo new moon, this, this Pisces full moon has been coming. It's like sitting on the horizon, like this enormous weight of energy and like all, all of August, all of Leo season, all of August was like massively this like big energy high and I was just like go, go, go. And I was just riding this massive wave, like wave after wave of energy and I was like massively productive and I, I was like, you know, felt like I just wanted to keep doing and doing and doing and working and working and working in all different types of areas, just doing, I got so much stuff done in one month, it was insane. Um, and then a few days ago, I just kind of hit the wall, like energetically speaking, I've still been feeling really great and like interested in everything, but I just felt like there was so much energy running through my system that it was completely overwhelming and I literally couldn't do anything any anymore. And I've been sitting around uh, just kind of vegging out for a few days because I feel like it's like so important to just allow all this energy to like sift through me and settle. Um, and that's kind of what's going on with this whole face off between Virgo and Pisces. <laughs> this week it's like it's like we um we can either find this face off between Virgo and Pisces very uncomfortable and very full of conflict or we need to find a way to harmonize this, right? Because on the one hand all the Virgo energy wants us to take life really seriously, pay attention to the details, get all of our ducks in a row, get our shit together, um, take our daily responsibilities and like house cleaning, <laughs> um, like, and our, like our, what, what's the word? I already said responsibilities. What's the other word? Like commitments and all of that. Take that all very seriously, you know, and get everything all together, right? Um, and on the other hand, Pisces wants us to completely escape all of it, <laughs> to, tra to transcend all of it. And so there's this tug of war, you know, feeling like you might want to just like entirely escape your life, entirely escape your responsibilities. Um, that's how I'm feeling today. Like I got some stuff to do today. I'm just like, man, I could just use one more day of not really doing anything. But it's like reality is like, no, 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 enough fantasy, time to get back to reality. And so I've been trying to allow this to coexist, <laughs> reality and fantasy, Re allow them to coexist within you, allow yourself to kind of be in this type of transcendental escapist type of mode of flowing into your daydreams, flowing into your fantasies, um, having like the transcendent spirituality experiences, but then on the other hand, still tending to your daily life, still doing whatever it is that you really need to be doing. Um, and having like the, you know, Virgo is also very spiritual, but it's like spiritual in the like very grounded type of way. It's like spirituality that's experienced within your body and Pisces is spirituality that is experienced transcendent of your body. And so we want to harmonize that together so that like spirit and the fit, so that like the spirit realm and the physical realm can meet and can merge. Um, but it's like, they don't quite know how to speak to each other. They don't quite know how to talk to each other. And they're trying to find a way to interface, trying to find a way to meld. So it's interesting. So literally you're you're melding non-physical with physical energy this week. You're you're melding fantasy with reality. You're melding fantasy with reality and realizing that neither of those are really what you think because things that you might think are complete fantasy that are completely unreal on some level from some perspective in some dimension that is real. Same thing with reality isn't as real as you think it is because everything is all 
the physical dream that we are weaving. Okay, everything is the physical dream that we are weaving. So it's like the the veil between the real and the unreal is dissolving and we're starting to find out that this whole conflict between reality and fantasy or between the physical and the non-physical that it, that like the division is an illusion and they're they're weaving back together so and that's that can play out very 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 literally in your life so it'd be interesting to just as you live out this week to just kind of see how that theme is playing out in 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 your like in the minutia of your life in the minutia of your life oh, let me just keep shuffling this it's like i saw my dead cat this morning like walking around my bathroom and like with my eyeballs <laughs> wide open and that's a first like i don't um i see lots of strange things but i don't see dead people like right i'm not a, i'm not a medium i don't typically communicate with passed on spirits but i saw my cat this morning my, my dead cat walking around <laughs> I was like, wow, this, this Pisces full moon is, um, it's going to be something like, so you could be seeing, right? Seeing strange things, seeing things that you thought were not real, seeing them manifested as real. Queen of Cups, the journey, which is the death card, the thinning of the veil, right? The thinning of the veil and the archer. That would be the chariot and the traditional tarot. That's cancer energy. That is the melding of the, the two streams, right? The melding of the two streams. Actually, if you just look at this card, isn't this interesting? Just think of like how a bow works, right? This the, the bow string needs to be attached to both ends of the bow, both ends of the bull, bow. <laughs> then you pull back from the middle and that's where all of the power comes from. That's what gives the arrow the power the initiative the intention the drive to spring forward it's because you need to pull back from both the poles right this it's a very i've never really thought of a bow this way before but somehow the the bow is a representation of polarity and when you find the power of the center and you harness the energy that is created by the polarity then you can really shoot ahead and spring forward and go on this spiritual journey right i mean look at even this, this queen of vessels here this queen of cups is a salmon climbing up the river right returning to the source salmon return to their source that is what they do they they cannot help it it is what they do they climb up waterfalls right they don't even have legs right? they swim up waterfalls they jump up waterfalls to return to their source on this epic journey which transcends the veil right this is the, the veil is like completely dissolved. Like this week, the veil, <laughs> the veil is only as thick as you want it to be, right? The veil can completely dissolve and you can completely dissolve into it and you can find new purpose, new direction, new energy, new momentum in shooting forward. This deck, this is the Wildwood Tarot, the Wildwood Tarot. It's the deck I associate most out of all the ones I have with Virgo energy. And the next one I'm going to use, this is the Moonchild Tarot. This is the deck I have that I associate most closely with Pisces energy. So I wanted to get one from each of these decks. Two of Wands, stepping into your new world. Stepping into your new reality, a reality that you have been dreaming of and you're realizing that the reality that you're dreaming of is literally right in front of you. So like huge, huge theme that I've been experiencing over the past few days is that whatever, whatever you've been seeking is literally right in front of you. Like you literally already have it. You just haven't been able to see it <laughs> for some reason, for some reason you haven't been able to see it. And it might be in part because it's in a package that you did not expect. A really simple example of this is that um, before I got my dog, I sat around going for like months going, I want a dog, right? I was like summoning my dog and I thought I wanted a big fluffy female dog. And what did I get instead? A tiny short haired male dog. But that dog ended up being the exact perfect dog for me, right? Like I could not ever have conceived of my dog, but he is the perfect dog for me and he was delivered to me by the universe. We had a date with destiny to meet each other, right? So the thing that you want that is right in front of you 
it, it might just take a shifting of your perspective to understand that you already have what you want, that you already have what you want, right? Um, it, like whether you're looking for love or whether you're looking for money, whether you're looking for stability or success um, or spiritual gifts, like whatever it is that you're seeking, somehow, some way, it is already right in front of you. And it's just a matter of shifting your perspective to realize that you just haven't accepted it yet, right? You just haven't accepted it yet because maybe it doesn't look like what you wanted. It, it, it's like, this is where <laughs> you need to like, um, this is what we're all doing, right? This is what we're all doing. This is the the blending of fantasy and reality, right? You dreamed it up and it looked different. It looked different. It didn't look like what, what you've received. And so since the thing that you have received looks so unfamiliar, it doesn't look at all like what you dreamt up, right? It doesn't look like what you dreamt up, but it is exactly what you need. It is exactly what fits the bill. You dreamt it up, right? And the universe delivered. And it's just a matter of recognizing it for what it is. It's just that it could be very, very different, very, 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 very strange, right? It could look very different than what you thought um, because another big theme right now is that we're all being challenged to like grow and expand beyond what we've been before, right? I mean, that, that's like a theme for always and forever, but I've really been noting, noticing this last week, different specific examples I've been seeing of like the universe giving to you exactly what you wanted, but giving it to you in a package that you don't recognize so that you can learn to recognize it so that you can learn to love this thing you never thought you could love right um learn to learn to receive something in a way you never thought you could receive it and it's like so as we expand our perspective and go wow i actually already do have what i want it just doesn't it just doesn't look like the way i thought it would look but then when you go, oh, wow, that is exactly what I want. That is exactly what I wanted all along and I already have it. Now you've really expanded your consciousness because now you've accepted something that was beyond your imagining. You've accepted something that expands you in some way because it is beyond what you could conceive of before. And it might bring you very different experiences. You might have to completely like, <sighs> so hard to articulate. It's like, You might have this feeling of like, but I didn't want it to be like this. I wanted it to be like that. <laughs> I didn't want it to be like this. I wanted it to be like that. And now that I see what it looks like, I don't know how I can want that. I don't know how to want what I want. I don't know how to want what I already have. I don't know how to love what I love. And so it's very interesting. We're being to like challenge. We're being challenged to accept things in new ways, to love things in new ways, and to really just get outside of ourselves, right? Get outside of our own box, get outside of the box you put yourself in and receive something in a new way, love something in a new way, accept something in a new way, because the thing that you want is already right in front of you. And it's just a matter of, no, they're saying that's the wrong card. <laughs> um, it's just a matter of noticing that you already have it. And that might be like, for some people that might be just like a little bit of a vertigo experience, a little bit disoriented and go, oh yeah, wow, okay, I get it. I get that I already have what I want in some way, shape or form. For other people, this could be like massively shocking, like deep down into your core where it like shakes your very identity, right? You could have some kind of identity crisis because you go, wait, 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 how could this thing, <laughs> how can I even, how can I even begin to want this in this way? How can I even begin to love the thing when it looks like this? How, how can I even begin to enjoy this experience? This experience was something I never wanted to have. So it, it, this is like whole degrees, right? Some people, this might just be like a little bit of a shift. Um, some people, this could be very, very shaking you to your very core. <laughs> Holy shit, we got the chariot, like, right? <laughs> this archer card would be the chariot, right? And here we have the chariot. Seven, and seven six of swords transition wow these cards mirror each other in such a <laughs> fascinating way the cancer energy is here twice isn't that interesting i don't know i was feeling cancer energy so significantly last night and i couldn't figure out why like there, there's nothing really happening in cancer right now at the time i'm filming this it was like but i could just feel cancer energy and i felt like cancer energy itself i was like feeling it come through as this like blue ray angelic energy um
I guess I'll just leave it at that because it, it would take too long to describe that whole experience and that might kind of derail this video. <laughs> um, so anyway, we have this cancer energy of balancing the two streams, balancing, balancing, balancing. It's like somehow in some way cancer energy is assisting in this balance between Pisces and Virgo is how basically how I would describe this. Cancer knows something about balance, about moving forward, about momentum and about harmony and cancer is lending lending its energy here to to help Virgo and Pisces balance this out. And this is a journey that we're all going on. These are both cards of journey. The Six of Swords is, is a transition and a journey, right? Literally paralleling with the journey. So we have, I drew these top cards to represent Virgo. I drew the bottom cards to represent Pisces. Here we have Virgo and Pisces getting on the same page. These two cards, these are almost opposite. So we have the Salmon returning to her source, right? Returning home returning home. But what does she do? What does the salmon do once she returns home? She lays her eggs, right? They, the salmon return to their source to spawn, to create new life, to create the next generation. The next generation steps through the new world. But this can be you, right? This can be you becoming your own next generation. This can be you becoming your own, like transforming into the, your, your new self, like rebirthing of the self, right? The rebirth of the self, stepping into your new world. With the, with the, literally with the world in the palm of your hand. So returning to your source to begin anew and move forward into your new world. And I'm going to leave you guys there. I think that about sums that up as well as I can do it justice at this time. So sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.